special edition of Live at Five featuring Victoria Puy. Is that how you say it? Assistant 4-H agent in Lafayette Parish. She's here today to demonstrate three ways to create a face cloth covering recommended by the CDC. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Anna. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm not a personal fan of, of sewing. So do you have some ways to uh, make a face cloth covering that doesn't require sewing? Yes, I do. And I found out that one of these ways is actually one of my favorites. Um, it's using the bandana method. Oh, cool. Okay. So um, I, I was looking up at the CDC website and the CDC recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public settings. So um, the ones you're going to demonstrate today, are they from the CDC? Yes, they are. They're on their okay. website. Um, just make sure you scroll Great. all the way down. Okay, okay. So scroll all the way down, guys. I'm going to put a link into the comments right now and send y'all the uh, link where you can find basically picture instructions to what Victoria is going to demonstrate today, if it will let me. Um, but um, anyways... So we're going to go on, but uh, face coverings, remember, should be washed routinely. And um, if you're looking to donate these face coverings to healthcare workers, be aware that homemade face coverings are not a substitute for PPE. They are meant to prolong the life of PPE. Different hospitals require different guidelines, so call and check before you donate. And also, Victoria, were you saying maybe like if there's places, depending on the community, to donate to the elderly and things like that? Yeah. So like I know our neighborhood has um, the neighborhood app and some are like, I need help securing a mask for my elderly grandma or my neighbor. Um, and they might not have skills to sew. And that's why these are great, too. Um, but if you have those kind of connections, these would be great for that. Awesome. So if you want to go ahead and, and do your thing. All right, so y'all, the first one we're going to do is the bandana. Um, you say a bandana. Um, if you don't have a bandana, an easy, quick substitute um, is a piece of cloth that's about 20 by 20. Um, what works great is a pillowcase. Um, so what we'll do is we'll fold it in half. And since it's a square, it doesn't matter which way you go. And from there, we're going to fold that in three. So the easiest way to do that is come up a little bit from the bottom and come down a little bit from the top. So you'll have this um, to where the gaps are in the middle right here. Um, and then you take two hair ties um, or rubber bands um, and you're going to slip them on the end. And you want them about six inches apart in the middle. So it's gonna kind of look like a Tootsie Roll with the edges right here. And then here's where the magic happens. You go ahead and fold it over. So you've got the front that's all nice and tucked in. Here's where all that extra fabric is. And here's your hair ties. Three, two, one. And we have our face mask from the bandana. That's, Easy as that's super cool. Is it? Uh, is it true with the face mask, you need to put it completely over your nose to be covered? Yeah, because you want to make sure you're not getting particles that are like all that. Um, so they're not coming out or in. So make sure it covers underneath your chin and then um, underneath your eyes because you want to better see. OK. And guys, um, this is what the pictures on the website will look like. Um, step by step, quick and easy instructions. So step by step instructions, y'all, I posted the. Um, link in the comments so y'all check that out it's victoria's demonstrating three different ways how to create this face cloth covering for you and she just demonstrated the bandana method and now she's on to the next method so this is called the t-shirt um covering so you take an old t-shirt doesn't really matter what size um this one for reference is an adult medium um you can actually get two out of this one um because of the way it is so the CDC, again, has the guidelines already with pictures. Um, they recommend seven to eight inches. So on my little cutting board here, we'll measure out seven to eight. We'll go eight, and you'll just cut straight across. Okay. 
you're going to end up with a tube of material. So we didn't cut the sides. We just cut across. So you've got like this if you want to make one of those scarves. Um, so the way my T-shirt is, it's got um, stitching on the two sides. Some have it only on one side. Some have both. So what I went ahead and did was I folded it the opposite way to where those seams are matched up. Um, so let me flip my camera around to kind of show you all what I did. Okay, so right here, um, so we've got the two seams together and then the two nice and just folded edges. Um, and so if we look here on our instructions, we've done step one. Now we're gonna move to step two where we're gonna cut a rectangle within the rectangle and leave about an inch from the top and the bottom. So that is gonna create our ties on this side and our face mask here. So I'm gonna flip y'all back around so I can cut. And y'all feel free to ask questions while she's doing this. You know, not everybody like like me, I'm not a sewing type of person. So these methods are actually um, no sew methods. And so she just did a bandana one and now she's working on a t-shirt method to create a face cloth covering. And again, we have instructions to um, the CDC website in the comments where um, these instructions can be found. But again, feel free to ask questions. That's why we went live with this. And um, yeah, take it away. So this is, before I cut, I wanna show y'all kind of how this looks. Um, so I've got my inches on top and bottom. Um, and then this section right here is what we're gonna go ahead and cut. Um, so this front part is what's gonna be on your face. So think half on one side, half on the other. This one you've gotta really play around with. You might need some edits to make sure it fits properly because they were a little big when I tested them out. Um, but I passed up the seam and I'm gonna go about right here just for guidelines. Okay, so we got this section cut out. Next step is to cut where those one inches were. So we have ties. So that tube is no longer a tube at this point because we've cut it open. And so you've got this funky looking thing of material. Okay, so the way this one works, um, the way they did instruct for you to tie it is to start with the bottom and you tie it around your neck. Um, but for me, it's easier with my ponytail to go above because it holds it better, um, just because it's not sliding as much. And then, so it's like that. And then you can go ahead and take this and do the same thing, just tie it in a knot. Oh, that's um, awesome. Okay. And that's pretty tight to your face, right? Yes, and this one, because it's not elastics, you tighten it as much as you would like. Um, you might be wondering, what about, like they keep talking about layers. How can I add layers to this without having to, to cut more? Remember that strip we cut out? Um, you can go ahead and place that in the center um, of your mask and that'll give you two extra layers. So you end up having three layers because it fits right in that, um, that little pocket. Cool. Um, okay. And if these little things are bothering you, um, you can go ahead and cut those off and it'll still fit nice and easy in there. Um, just like with the bandana, you can go ahead and use a pillowcase to make this as well. Um, I'll show you that real quick. I did that earlier. Awesome. Um, Annabelle's asking, should I wash my mask after each use? I would say, um, I'm not sure exactly how the CDC words it, but I know that they are saying uh, make sure you wash it every so often. So if you're going out in public a lot, yes. Um, but if you're just wearing it um, outside and you're talking to your neighbor, you might not need it as much if you go to the grocery store is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I'm, I've got the uh, website up. It says they should be routinely washed depending on the frequency of use, just like you said. So. Um, so for the pillowcase, I just went ahead and I cut off the part where you insert the pillow, um, those seven, eight inches. Um, so this is what it looks like if you see the stitching there. Um, same kind of deal. Um, but if you didn't have a T-shirt to use, but you needed or you had extra pillowcases, um, our fitted sheets, flat sheets, all those work too. just trying to um, save on space right now with those um, tutorials. 
All right, Anna, we're going to move on to our last but not least. Okay. Uh, this one's actually going to use some sewing techniques. Don't freak out on me, y'all. We only have four stitches to sew. Um, so it's not one of those crazy, like, oh, my goodness, I can't do this. Yes, you can do this. I promise. Victoria was telling me about this one earlier, and I was like, ooh, I'm not a sewer. This terrifies me. Ooh. <laughs> So this is what they're going to end up looking like. Um, again, I've used hair ties just because I had them and they're easy. Um, I used some scrap fabric, but the inside is pillowcase fabric. Um, so how we start for this one is you're going to need um, two six by 10 inch rectangles. But I'm going to be honest, y'all, if you're a beginner sewer, Go ahead and make that an 11 by 7 so you have more fabric to fold over because I felt like this one was a little small, um, especially if we're working with someone who's got a bigger face. Some of the guys, maybe you have some beard hair. Um, you're going to need it a little wider. Um, so 11 by 7, which is more like this size, um, worked a lot better. So that would be my one recommendation. Okay, so this, guys, is actually a pillowcase. I cut the sides where it was sewn together so I have a flat piece of fabric. Um, to save time, I've already um, measured out where the, uh, the fabric's gonna be cut at, but I wanted to show you how it's all in one piece. Um, if you're gonna make multiple, it's easy if you make a pattern and then you can throw those squares on top to kind of guide your cuts so you can figure out how many you can make in one pillowcase. I've cut at least 10 squares or rectangles out of one pillowcase. Um, for these, I wanted to use more of the printed fabric instead of just layering it with that. So I've done a solid pillowcase and then this printed pillowcase. So that way I could have more fun looking masks for anyone who might need them. And the CDC is saying we have a couple questions on uh, how to wash your mask. CDC is, is recommending you just wash it in the washing machine. Yeah, because all of this material can be washed. Um, I've, I've heard make sure you don't microwave anything that has um, elastic or certain things because it can catch it can melt and catch fire. Um, also, later I'll show you how I added a pipe cleaner. Make sure you don't microwave the pipe cleaner or any bread ties because of that metal piece in there. We don't want to explode any microwaves. Oh, no. <laughs> so to save time, y'all, I've already cut. Um, this one will be three layers um, because the, the this is the microfiber pillowcase material. So I felt like we, we could use an extra layer here. Um, so we have two solids with our one t-rex print so let me show y'all what i'm doing here okay so i've got this laid out i'm oh, sorry don't want to be sideways i'm gonna lay this one on top and then i'm gonna go ahead and lay this one on top again guys i'll show you this is exactly how the cdc shows it um i just changed this to 11 by 7 instead of a 10 by 6 um so we cut it and then we're gonna lay them on top like this and then we're going to fold. So you want to fold the long end. So think of it as if we're folding like a hamburger, uh, a hot dog. Hamburgers will be next. Um, we're going to fold those edges over. It says a fourth of an inch, but that's why we made it a little bit bigger. So if your seam allowance, your seam allowance is what you're folding over. So we don't, um, we don't want the fabric to, sorry, y'all, to, um, if we just let it, it's going to pull and it's going to undo itself. So we want to make sure we put all those fraying edges inside. So that's how we fold it over and we just um, stitch it down so that way it doesn't come apart on us. Give me just a second and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, we have Brian asking, is it all right to just spray the mask with disinfectant between uses? I'm sure that can hold you over until you can get a good washing. Um, I wouldn't recommend spraying it right before you're going to wear it because you don't want to breathe in all those. Um, just like when you're spraying, you try not to inhale because it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> I imagine it wouldn't. <laughs> um, 
Heather, Heather, uh, Heather saying, thank you. I've got no sewing skills. I liked the bandana one with the hair ties. <laughs> and, it's uh, wonderful. You might have to go over that one again. Cause, um, we had, we had more people join us during the sewing one than we did earlier. So. Sure. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little peek of how this is looking. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've folded it over. Um, so I got all my raw edges here. Um, and then this side will be sewn. I'll do the same thing here. Um, and I'll put y'all back while I do that. Um, this way. Anna, do we have any other questions coming in? Um, not at the moment. Uh, a lot of people are just saying thank you for doing this tutorial. And I would like to just tell everybody again, um, the face covering should be washed routinely. And if you're looking to donate face cloth coverings to healthcare workers, be aware that these homemade face coverings are not a substitute for PPE. They're meant to just prolong the life of the PPE and different hospitals require different guidelines. So call ahead y'all before you donate these face coverings. And again, we, we've gone over three different ways how to make them and two out of the three do not require any type of sewing skills. And again, these are actually recommended by the CDC and the CDC recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public settings now. So again, just be safe out there y'all. And um, Okay, y'all, I'm gonna move y'all over to our sewing machine. This is what scares me. I can't do this. <laughs> Sewing. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So the main thing we want to do here is when we sew it, we want to make sure we catch all the layers. So if we were diligent um, when we folded and pinned, that allows us to make sure we have all those um, layers. Or if we just folded it over and just kind of went with it, um, we might not catch them all. So that's one perk of pinning. You can go ahead and iron it, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I didn't iron in that fold. And guys, don't forget to, if you have kids, um, 4-H is doing a great program through the Ag Center's um, website, but also through our Facebook and Instagram. We're doing 4-H virtual recess. Monday to Friday each week. And so uh, an agent every day posts and has an activity that's posted and it's always something that you can learn from and be challenged by. And so y'all check that out too each day and on the Ag Center's Facebook page, Instagram, and the Ag Center's website. So this is what we just did here. Um, you can see the three different layers. Also, guys, don't stress about if your fabric's not completely straight. Um, this is a very forgiving pattern, um, so it's going to be okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sew again, but I just kind of want to show you so you can see what I was doing. Um, I'm going to stitch this bottom, um, and then we'll move on to the next step because we're almost there. It seems like not crazy amounts of sewing on this one. Oh no, this is one of the best for user-friendly new patterns I've found. And so basically, I mean, this could be a family fun activity right now is teaching your kids how to sew. <laughs> These are one of those projects that if you got somebody in your family who already knows how to sew, you could video chat them and they could teach you how to do this. That's um, cool. If you just got a machine laying around but don't really know how to use it. Hear that, guys? Y'all have some extra time on your hand. Um, do something great with it. You can make face cloth covering for your family, your whole family.
Okay, guys. So this next step I've added, it's not on the um, tutorial list from the CDC, but I felt it was made life easier. Um, so the way that they recommend finishing this, um, it can be with, I think it's an eighth of an inch elastic, wide elastic, but that's what's in really high demand right now. So it's gonna be hard to find that unless you have that laying around. Um, I've used all mine already. Um, so I'm gonna use the hair tie. Um, you can also put yarn or ribbon. Um, if you're gonna put yarn or ribbon, they say you should like put it with a bobby pin and kind of like after it's sewn, but there's an easier way to do that. You can, let's see if I will use this piece of material right here. Um, if this is our string, hold on, let me put our So if this is our string, if we lay it here and fold it this way, we can go ahead and pin um, and sew and then come back and tie this after instead of having to thread it through that hole because that just seems like extra steps. Um, but if you're using a hair tie or a rubber band, you're going to need to sew it into the mask because there's okay. no other way unless you're going to cut this and then have to pull it back and tie it. That just seemed like unnecessary steps. Um, but to jumpstart that process, I like to just sew a straight stitch to sew these layers down so that way when we fold it, it's not like a whole different layer. So that's what I'm going to do right now is just throw, sew those straight stitches um, to hold down our material. Megan says, great idea. I also like the fact that you included the no sew examples. <laughs> Everybody's on board for no sewing. <laughs> I like to sew, but I still like the no-sew options, too. Yeah, I agree. And just a tip for my new sewers, um, if you're having trouble with the machine and threads are getting stuck, Check your bobbin. I know usually for me, if there's some kind of thread getting caught or bunching up, it's usually the bobbin's threaded backwards or it's running out or something like that. So that would be one thing to check. It's a good tip, y'all. And for everyone out there, um, 4-H actually did a virtual 4-H uh, recess on how to sew a face mask. And I'm going to put that in the comments as well so y'all can go to that page. But um, the ones Victoria is demonstrating today are from the CDC what they recommend for everybody to go out with right now um, for face cloth cutter covering to public settings at the grocery store. So y'all make sure to make a mask. Okay. So this is our little stitch. Um, no, it's not the straightest, but that's okay. That's the beauty of this tutorial. Okay. So here's our um, ponytail holder. We got to stick it in the mask. So just like what we did for the bandana, if you weren't there for that, we'll catch up on that in just a second. Um, so this part's a little tricky. Um, make sure you have some pins. If you don't have straight pins, safety pins will work too. Bobby pins will work too. Just something to hold these together so we can sew. Because you see how it wants the bunch? That's what we wanted to do, but we need to tack it down first. Um, so this is another reason why we added that extra inch so we don't have to be so diligent. Um, so we're going to want to pin this to where, I don't know how y'all can see this, but this right here is our band, and we've got the pin on this side, so that way um, we don't want to sew over the rubber band, but we want to make sure it's enclosed in the little pocket. Yeah. That looks really good. Very impressive. <laughs> um, for this step... You can, if you want it neater, you can go back once you just kind of tack it down and move the fabric over to get it closer. Um, I did those with my other ones, but for this one, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but you see how right here we've got it to where it's pinned. Um, I suggest between five, seven pins. Just know that these pins stick. Um, so if you got younger ones, make sure they know that um, they might get pricked a little bit if they're working on this. And again, guys, make it into a family activity. Um, 
We've got some time at home right now, and um, it's definitely an, an activity you can do with your family. Okay, so this step, um, this is where my um, rubber band is. And I want to make sure that I keep it right there because I don't want it to get caught this way. Um, and then as I'm sewing, I'm going to pull this um, and take it out pin by pin. Um, you can try to stretch it like this um, for a little bit, but it doesn't like to stay. So just kind of bear with it. Don't stress over it. Um, it's not meant to be perfect. Allow yourself some wiggle room and enjoy the process. It's a learning process. There's three different ways to create this type of face cloth covering, guys. So, um, you know, if you can't sew, it's okay. She also demonstrated two ways, other ways. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, so this becomes one of the sides. I'm not For time purposes, I'm not going to go ahead and do the other side, but it's exactly the same. Um, but what I did want to show you is the difference of putting some kind of nose piece versus not. So let me grab my already done pieces. Yeah, Anna, you're going to have to tell me how this looks so that way I okay. can, um, like we practiced earlier. Okay, so this is one that has a pipe cleaner in the top. So I'll show you what it looks like without the pipe cleaner and then what the pipe cleaner or so the nose bridge kind of does. Um, yeah, so, so loop it per ear. Yeah, there's that opening right there. So it's just, it's not quite as tight to your face without the pipe cleaner in it. So this way it has the pipe cleaner. It's much more form to her face. That's what you want. So that's an extra step that's not on the CDC website, but Victoria's come up with it and it, it fits your face much better. So all it was is a simple pipe cleaner. Um, these can be thrown in the washer. Um, don't microwave them and see how this kind of allows that shape. Um, so I want to show you how to install this. If you've made it through the ear pieces, you've got this. This is real easy. Um, I thought about using a shorter piece, just like the regular mask has a short nose piece, but I was kind of afraid, what if it's not quite in the right spot? I don't want it stabbing anybody. So what I did for these was I measured it out um, from the tip of where the earpiece is all the way across. So it's just going to provide support all the way across the mask. Um, let me flip my camera and I'll show you how I did them. So we have our pipe cleaner. All we have to do is fold it over. And then we go ahead and pin um, along that line just like we did for the earpieces. And we'll sew it. So I'll do that now. Awesome. And guys, if you're joining us, she's uh, demonstrating how to make a face cloth covering. And this is recommended by the CDC. We've put instructions to the CDC's website with pictures. Um, link is in the comments, but um, we wanted to demonstrate live too so y'all could ask any questions and actually see it, see it done. So, there's three different ways, and this is um, this is the sewing way to make one. But also, Victoria's including an extra step on this to have a, pi a pipe cleaner in there to actually conform to your face a little bit better and fit fit um, your nose better, so it, it's tight to your face. So this is what I've done. Um, our pipe cleaner is enclosed in this little bottom pocket, um, and just like what we did for the ear hole the um you're gonna stitch right on top like right on to enclose that pipe cleaner so it doesn't fall out and shift while we're um wearing it
Okay, y'all. So the last step that the CDC talks about is securing your mask on the elastic to where you need it. Um, that's going to depend per person. Um, they do a really good job explaining that in the, um, the notes. So let me flip this over. So they're using elastic in this picture, but you see right here where it says you stitch it? That is once you know how many, um, where you need the ruffles at to cover your particular face, because we're all different. Um, so do you need it more room? Do you need it scrunched up more at the bottom? You don't have to do this step, but if you know you're making this mask for you, go ahead and customize it. Um, one tip is when you cut that pipe cleaner, I forgot to mention, do not, do not use your good sewing scissors. If you've got good sewing scissors, you may have probably been warned several times, only cut fabric. Don't cut paper. Don't cut pipe cleaners. That's just what's been passed down from generations to me was don't use your sewing scissors for anything but fabric. That's a good sewing tip. <laughs> um, so that's what it looks like. Um, any questions on this one? I'll go ahead and show the other two real quick again. But uh, Megan's asking, what are the options for material to use for attaching the mask to your ears? Okay, so some of them I've seen um, are the eighth of an inch elastic. Anything wider just really pulls on your ears and makes it really uncomfortable. Um, I've seen ribbon. So what you can do instead of doing this kind of finish, um, you can attach ribbon to this and this side um, and tie it to the back of your head almost like going like we did for the t-shirt, if you weren't there for that, I'll show on this kind of how we do that. Um, you take the two ends here and you're gonna tie it. So, so what you would do with this is where you would attach on here. This is where you would attach to make it a tie. Okay, so you could use ribbon or hair ties or elastic if you actually have it. Elastic, other things they say, um, even just general rubber bands. Um, you can use scraps of fabric to make your own ties um, by just kind of folding them over and again, stitching the sides so they don't fray. Um, I'm even sure you could use a pipe cleaner if you needed, like once you, if you made that pocket like this one talked about, um, you could kind of twist it up in there um, just to kind of secure it. Especially since these going, aren't going for um, health care use, it's really just a protection for when we're going into the stores. we got to pick up medicine, um, those kind of essential runs that we are with the public. Fair enough. Yeah. So you want to demonstrate the uh, bandana version again? We had a couple. Uh, yeah, well. All right, y'all. If you weren't here in the beginning, this is my favorite. It's a no-so. You got this, I promise. Um, so we use a bandana, a 20 by 20 piece of fabric. Um, you can cut it out of a sheet. You can cut it out of a t-shirt, a pillowcase. Um, so it's a square. So it doesn't matter which way you fold it, but we want to fold it in half. Okay. And so we're going to end up folding this, the bottom part up and the up part down so we're going to take it into thirds so let me show you like this okay so this is our bandana we're going to fold it up and then we're going to fold it down they show this in the pictures it's just a little bit different because they don't actually show it moving um so we got this long nice little thin piece so now you're going to take we don't know what it um, you're going to take a ponytail holder and put it about six inches from the other one. So you just kind of slip it in there. You're going to make a very kind of thin Tootsie Roll or candy wrapper type look. Okay. So you're like, okay, Victoria, I get that. But how does that become a face mask? Here's the magic. <laughs> it really is magic. <laughs> you fold it. And you fold it. You're like, okay, I don't quite get it. But then this becomes your earpieces, and now you're going to have to work with this a little bit. You might have to pull it out, but 
all we did was didn't do anything to it. I promise, no magic trick here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so you're like, oh, but that doesn't quite cover your face. I know it doesn't quite. But what we can do is we can open it back up and kind of play with it and kind of pull these apart to make sure we're covering the things that need to be covered, just like what we talked about um, putting that nose piece in the other one. Um, so let's try adjusting it for your face. And that, that is the bandana no sew version. Yeah, that's my favorite too. I agree. <laughs> that's cool. And again, um, guys, remember CDC just they recommend um, washing it after frequent uses, your face cloth covering, and then again putting it in the washing machine to wash it. So Anna, I'm gonna point out this again. This is the bandana no sew one. Um this is the step we did where you fold it in three. They try to de uh, demonstrate that, but it's just hard on paper. Um but that's where we put these. And then you fold it and then you just kind of pull it out to make it fit. So it's all there on the website, but just wanted to give you a visual of how it's actually done. Yes, thank you. It makes it a lot easier with the visual because I'm like, I agree. that's where I couldn't probably, <laughs> probably get it from that. So, you know, we have included the link, guys, in the comments to the CDC's page where all those instructions can be found. But um, this video is also going to um, be be on Facebook for forever. So again, you can come back and watch this even if you're not with us live today. So it's okay. Um, do you want to show that last no sew method just one more time? Oh, the t-shirt? Yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, let me put y'all down. Okay, so we take a general t-shirt. I use the medium. Um, oh, if you're still with us from the beginning, I told you you could make two out of one t-shirt. That's because, okay, so we look like a crop top now, but we've cut off eight inches already. But I measured a standard t-shirt for a medium, and there was 16 inches from underneath the armpit seam to the bottom. CDC recommends seven to eight inches per t-shirt mask. Um, so you can essentially make two per t-shirt. you got different size t-shirts. You can just play with that. Um, this is where math comes in. Yes, we use math and sewing, so we're wondering when will that skill come in we learned in class? <laughs> uh, application. <laughs> so here is our instructions. Um, we cut the bottom off, and now we're going to make this oval. Um, this one, I will warn you, you got to play with it a little bit to get it to the size you need, because it's going to be the biggest one you make because the t-shirt material stretches. Um, Okay, so we got our oval. I'm sure, you can make some kind of cool um, infinity scarf out of this. Um, so, the way the shirt was folded, it had the seam edge like on opposite sides, but I want them in the middle um, just because I want them. I don't want them in the center of my face mask. I don't mind them in the ties, but I don't want them in the center where my nose is. Um, I just don't think that's comfortable. So I laid it out, and now we're going to cut that rectangle within the rectangle. The top and bottom that we saw left becomes the ties. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been going about an inch or two past the seam that's in the center to make that um, cut. So I'll show y'all again. This is how we we got our ties, the top and bottom, and then the center part. And this is where we'll cut right here to have a rectangle missing from the rectangle. I will say that the t-shirt does not fray um, as much as other fabrics, so you should be okay um, getting away with not kind of rounding the edges like we've done in the sewing one. Just be careful if you use fabric, like the pillowcase, um, that if you have that issue, you can always kind of fold it and tuck it in. 
Okay, so now we have this weird looking shape. You're gonna go ahead and cut those one inch open so our oval is broken um, so we can have our ties. So now you have this. It's got two on each side. Um, so in the CBC instructions, they kind of show you how to tie it. Um, because my curly hair always goes in a ponytail, I find it easier to use that as a way to kind of tuck it. Um, so it's not sliding down the back of my neck. Um, so they say start from the bottom. So I'm going to do this by my ears and up. And then this one, kind of pull it up. You see how it's really baggy? This is where you can kind of come and once you know for whose it you're making it, you can come and trim. Um, if you don't want your full ears covered, um, you can adapt as you need. Um, you can also kind of turn these down to make it shorter. Um, if you need to, go ahead and um, start from the beginning by making it shorter instead of going the eight inches maybe try seven or six knowing the fabric's going to stretch um and just kind of adjust accordingly um that center piece we cut out you can use that to add layers um to give it a couple more times because t-shirts um are pretty thin um so the more layers kind of helps protect more um particles from coming through but make sure again like anna's been reminding you um to go ahead and wash them routinely. Yeah, definitely guys, wash them routinely, wash them uh, in the washing machine. And you know, we're showing you this because CDC is recommending any public setting you go out in to, to wear that face cloth covering. So um, it's great, you know, make it a family fun activity as best you can. And everyone's got a little more time on their hands right now at home. So, uh, you know, make it into an activity, um, teach your kids to sew. And again, if, a, yeah, no, what are you saying? Sorry. Sorry. Um, this is a great use for extra bed sheets. Um, you're like, man, I, I, I need all my bed sheets. Well, are you having guests right now? Um, because we can pick them up after this is all over. But if you're needing face mask and you're really not sure where to find fabric, um, use some of those pillowcases and sheets, That's, um, for easy yeah. access instead of having to go fight crowds and lack of supplies out in the stores. 100%. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's much better. I think it really helped everybody because you can actually see it done instead of just reading instructions online, which is not necessarily all that helpful sometimes. <laughs> so thank you for showing us how to do it. And guys, don't not forget, the video is going to stay up. So you'll be able to see it after we finish this live. So it's it's no worries. Like you're you're going to be able to watch Victoria over and over and over again and learn how to do it right and learn how to do it the right way and you'll be good. But thank you again, Victoria, for doing this. Thank you all for being here. I hope this was helpful. Um, I know for me seeing things and just the little things, I say sewing is um, it's a science, but it's also an art. So even if you have all the instructions like in the recipe, there's still something that makes it click. So for me, seeing it and kind of pointing those things out is helpful. Um, so I hope yeah, this is helpful. Y'all stay safe and stay home. Um, and we can't wait till we can mingle and see all of you again. Yes, 100%. And also, I do have a question for you. So you can learn sewing through 4-H, correct? Yes, you can. Um, in fact, in Lafayette Parish, we actually do a sewing workshop. And that puts um, the kids in... Like they get to work on their sewing and we also have a fashion contest. So um, reach out to your local parish and see kind of what they have going on. Um, there's even a sewing camp um, that happens in January through the state. Um, there's a fashion board. Um, really cool. So there's all kind yeah. of cool things. Cool. One of my 4 H'ers sewed her prom dress. Um, it's wow. beautiful. Um, so you can do lots of cool things. That is awesome. I'm like, y'all hear that. So again, you know, try, join 4-H. It's really cool. You learn a lot of different skills. So anyway, sure. thanks, Victoria. Um, that Thank is you. it for today, y'all. Y'all stay safe out there. Bye, y'all.